That works. All right, go. Hello, this is James Helm of Helm Enterprises Grinding Division, standing inside the world headquarters, which happens, oddly enough, to be the same exact building as the headquarters of the forging division. Uh, That's magic. Show, not all, but just a little bit quick, quick stuff on how to make tomahawks. Let's start with a water jet cup blank and have my new bevel gauge which slips over the end and you just mark it with a sharpie and then grind up to the line and you're good to go. You end up with your bevel ground. So it's a very quick accurate way to get your line down where you want to grind to. Also using a new work wrist improved over my old one um, it is not completely where it needs to be i probably need to get one more piece re-water jetted with a little bit of modification to it but it's still an improvement over my old one i've already got it set to the angle i need it to be so i'll just sit here and grind my bevel in real quick ready So even though the tooling helps quite a bit, there's still a fair amount of hand skill that goes into it. You can see my bevel's higher on this one side than it is the other. So I continue to check it as I'm grinding, and I have to adjust, feed it less on this side, feed it some more down here on the uh, point of the beard. And even that out, get it where it's a nice bevel all the way across. I'm going to go ahead and flip it over, bring the other side, and then I'll pull it the rest of the way up.
getting there. This one obviously is a hammer pole without a sharpened inner beard. So all it needs ground is the main bevel. So we'll show the little bit of the heat treatment next. Okay, we're getting ready to do the heat treatment part. I'm using here an even heat heat treatment furnace. You can see the legs here. This was not intended to be set up vertically meant to be horizontal but I didn't want the tomahawks when they get hot for their weight to deform the shape so I wanted to be able to suspend them vertically down inside the chamber so I set it up like like I have it now and this is actually a lid off of an old kiln had a hole in the top and I extended it into a slot that is long enough for the tomahawks to fit in and then we built this hanger and we suspend the tomahawk blanks down in on a stainless steel large gauge welding rod. The stainless holds its strength more than carbon steel does whenever it's hot and it doesn't scale up so it lasts for a long time. And right now what we're heating in here is not a tomahawk but a plate of mild steel. The reason we're doing that is we're preheating our quench oil. Which, interestingly enough, warm oil actually quenches more quickly than cold oil does. It seems counterintuitive, but what's happening is you're making the oil thinner, less viscous, so that it's moving more easily. So when the hot steel contacts it, it moves the heated oil away and the cooler oil is able to come up against the steel more quickly. So warm oil cools more quickly than cold oil. So this is the third time we've heated the plate and quenched it. So oil ought to be at temperature. So we're ready to load our first tomahawk one. So we've got the hammer pole that we had a while ago, this is one of the new 15 inch models. See it's got the five rivet holes instead of three. And what we're going to do is take one of our suspension rods and hook it like so. Drop it down in the hole. Slip it in place and use the fire brick to cover up and keep the heat in better. And now we're going to restart the heating cycle. 
So when we, we just put a big chunk of cold steel in there, it drops the temperature down. So now the furnace has to heat, cycle, bring the temperature back up. Once it goes to temperature, you know, 4140 is a pretty simple steel. We don't really need to soak it. We can go straight from the quench into, uh, straight from the furnace into the quench and harden it. After we harden it, and it's cooled down all the way, um, or as much as it needs to, we will go into this Paragon um, ceramic kiln. This is a kiln that was at a high school. Three-phase kiln, and I bought it eh, relatively cheap, not, not too good a bargain, but not too bad of a, a expense. So I picked it up and I use it to temper with. So once I pull that out of the oil, I will suspend it on this rack inside. And once the whole batch has been hardened and it's ready to temper, then I'll close the lid and it'll run the first of three tempering cycles. Uh, the oil we're quenching in is a commercial quench oil from McMaster Car. It's a 20 second oil. 4140 needs a slow quench. So 20 seconds it, it does fairly well with. If you sat through the whole hour and 12 minutes worth of our test video, you can see it stands up pretty well. So right now, it's an awesome video. We dropped down over a hundred degrees. It's climbing. It'll take a little while for that temperature to come back up to where it needs to be. When it does, the alarm will go off and we'll know it's at temp and we can quench. In the meantime, I'm going to go back and keep grinding. Okay, as you can hear from the rather annoying beeping, it's up to temperature. So I'm just going to turn the alarm off. And actually, I'm going to make sure I have everything that I need first. Our little suspension rod. And stainless wire hanger. Hang on. Got it. Got our little wire hanger. And I'm just going to move the fire brick out of the way. Pull out a very hot tomahawk blank and go straight into the oil. And I'm going to swirl it back and forth. I don't want to go to side to side. If I do, it's more likely to warp it from uneven heating, or uneven cooling, rather. So what I'm doing right now is hardening the tomahawk blank by cooling it down rapidly. Um, some people that build tomahawks make them differentially heat treated where you have a harder edge and uh, tougher springer everything else and what I've found in my experiments is with the way I heat treat and the alloy that I'm using 4140 um, the same temper that holds a good edge when you're using it hard um, is also the same temper that makes for good pry bar so I don't need to differentially heat treat these I heat treat them all you know the same. I heat the same, I cool the same, so it's the same hardness throughout. And it just it happens to work for the way I do it. But I've had several people ask me, do I differentially heat treat? And the answer is no. With the way I do it, I don't need to. So it's in there. It's probably done everything that it really needs to, but I like to suspend it in there just in case for a few minutes. So I'll just set that rod across and hook the little stainless wire on there and I'll leave it. And in the meantime, I'll take the next one that's ready to go. And I will hook it, hang it, restart the heating cycle. And then you know, a few minutes before this is ready to come out, I'll pull the one that's in the oil out, I'll let it drip dry, I'll wipe it, 
down and then I'll hang it in the uh, kiln and get it ready for the tempering cycle. So we'll show that here in a few minutes when this comes up to temperature. Because Tobin was distracting me with silly internet videos instead of letting me grind like I needed Woo! to, we missed pulling this out before it came up to temperature. So this is already ready to quench. It's okay if it sits in there for a minute, not a big deal. So once one of my t-shirts wears out to the point where even I won't wear it, uh, I'll cut them up and bring That's them out. Saying something. Yeah, they usually get pretty ventilated before I do that. I'll bring them out here, cut them up, and use them for rags. Two riches. But I will pull this out. Just let the excess oil drip. You can see the the places where the scales popped off. It's kind of a lighter color. It's a white. That's usually a pretty good indication that it hardened well. That's fine. Yeah, it's lost all of its heat. So now I'll just set this aside. Wipe it down. Forty one forty is a good tough steel. It's not gonna hold a fine cutting edge like something higher carbon would, but with the kind of tasks that these tomahawks are designed for you want toughness and not necessarily fine edge holding you want it to not destroy itself whenever you are chopping into something hard it's not like a um, scandinavian carving axe that you do want to hold an edge very well that you're going to be carving soft pine with so it's not going to be as hard as some of the other blade steels, but as you can see, after hardening, it's still skating a file. That file is not biting in. So it's plenty hard. I'll go ahead and hang it up on the rack in here. Uh, when I have, well, in this, in this batch I have eight. Usually I do about six or so. Uh, once I have them all in there, I'll close it and start it up. So this one is ready to quench. It'll be just like you saw a while ago. That's a little bit of the process of making tomahawks. There's still quite a bit more that goes into it. Thanks. Yes. <laughs> we go in. We oh wait, wrong movie. Wrong movie. Oh there. Cobra. Uh the disease of the cure. And now, sometime later, we have finished hardening all eight in this batch. You can see. Got them all suspended in here. And we're ready to do our first tempering cycle. If we left it hard like this first time you tried to use it it would end up breaking too much stress in it so we now need to pull some of that stress out make it tough we're going to do that by heating it up for an hour um, when we quenched it it was you know over 1500 degrees when i'm tempering in the kiln i don't really have anything that goes over 600. So a lot cooler, we'll do it for an hour, it'll cool down, and then I'll do it for another hour, it'll cool down, and then I'll do it for another hour. So for a total of three tempering cycles, and make sure everything gets transformed into... Um, so got them all hanging in here. I'm gonna close the kiln. And there is not a switch on this. You have to turn it on and off at the breaker. So I've already turned on the breaker. I've already selected the program that's in here already. In this case, program number four. 
Okay, in this case, program number four, simply because that's the number I happened to assign to that one whenever I programmed it in. And all I have to do now is push start. Turn it on, give it a second, and you'll hear the uh, elements start to heat up. And there you hear the switch go on. So it'll come up to temp and cycle through in about an hour and 20 minutes. And since it's really late tonight, then I'll just start the next tipper cycle tomorrow morning and then the last one after that one has run its course and stuff has cooled down. Yep. See, it's already dark outside. <laughs> in fact, after 11 o'clock. So that's it for this go round. Check back later. Peace. Erasure. I try to no, discover. Oh man, okay. Right. I gotta introduce this. Uh, hello. This Where is the, uh, the back door boys. No. Oh, hell no. Yeah. I'm editing that out. <laughs> <laughs> my mother sometimes watches these videos. Oh, how much am I gonna get? This is what happens when you've been working in the shop all day and it's after 11 o'clock at night when you're finally shutting down. Oh, gosh. Duets. That's what happens. 11.23, actually. Wow. Yes. One, <clears throat> two, three. I tried to discover a little bit of something that made me sweeter. Oh, baby, refrain. You know, I don't actually know the song. For breaking my heart. Don't let that hold you back. I don't know the chorus. Don't let, don't let that hold you back. I'm so in love with you. I'll, I'll be forever true. I don't know true. That you give me no reason. Why you making me work so hard? That you give me no, that you give me no, that you give me no, that you give me no. So I'll hear you calling. Oh, baby, please, please, give a little respect to, to me. There. The end. <laughs>